<clears throat> I have really enjoyed making this video. I've learned so much from it. <clears throat> it's been really very interesting. You may remember that a few weeks ago I shot a video on the same model of gardeners, this 4LW, that had suffered very badly from water in the lubricating oil. Um, it was so badly polluted that it was just like Harvey's Bristol cream. It was completely white. And that particular engine was destroyed because of that. The crankshaft had seized, the pistons were all seized, the whole engine was destroyed. It wasn't, just wasn't salvageable. So, for our customer, we've built this new engine. It's had new block, uh, <coughs> heads redone, new pistons, <coughs> new injection pump, <coughs> injection uh, crankshaft checked, new shells, everything done. The engine is 100% now. And I have put a link in the description for this particular YouTube video. There's a link there where you can go back and watch that horrible mess that we had to go through. But what was the cause of it? Here's the original setup on the boat. Um, salt water flows through the exhaust manifold on the other side of the engine. You can't see it here. It flows out into that water muffler and out from the lid of the water muffler and straight up that black vertical pipe, as you can see there. It rises up quite a height. This is a schematic of the same arrangement. Salt water comes in to the, from the pump on the right there, passes along through the exhaust uh, manifold. It's mixed with the exhaust gases there. They're not isolated in any way. And then it passes into the water muffler and straight up that, that pipe. In order to see what was going on here, we had to set the system up in the yard as it was in the boat. So I know it's a bit Heath Robinson here, but it certainly did the trick. Um, whenever we run the engine under test, there was no pollution of the oil. You can see the tall black pipe there in the background. Now it just so happens that port number one on that exhaust is actually perforated. It's probably been perforated for some time and the owners haven't noticed. But this proves for sure that the whole exhaust system is completely full of water. Whenever you're dealing with problems like this, you have to re realize that pressure is pressure is pressure. It doesn't matter what causes it, it's all the same. Forget about flows, forget about pipe angles, forget about all that stuff. Think pressure. You must understand this or you're going to have problems. Pressure in any liquid is the same at any spot. The pressure here in that pipe is the same as here. It's the same as here if the pipes are joined together. Pressure is pressure is pressure. Now when I say that the pressure is the same at every point in a liquid, that's in a closed system like these water rails here. And that big tall pipe the pressure is determined by the height of liquid water in the pipe. And it's only determined by the height. The bore doesn't make any difference. The pipe could be maybe 10 mil in diameter. The pressure would be the same. The pressure is determined by the height of the pipe only. Now, a key point that I need to make here is the real harm that was done with the water and the oil here was done when the engine was stationary, not whenever it was running. Whenever the engine is stationary, you've still got that head of water there, but it's not impossible at all that at least one or more of the exhaust valves could be open. Now again, if the engine is in good condition, it, not, no harm can be done, but if it's in bad condition, the water is going to get down into the, into the sump. And we can confirm that by the simple fact that our lodge took at least six oil drums of polluted oil out of this engine. Six! That's 120 litres of horrible destroyed oil. Now, thanks a lot for joining me on this, uh, on this video. As I said, I really enjoy putting it together. And I need to make the point that this is a well-found boat. 
This is a good boat. She's very well kitted out. She's a super boat. Now, why was this pipe so high? Why was it high in the first place? Because it has to be in a, a sea-going sailing boat. Because as the boat keels over, as she heels over, the ports, both the input port and the output port, need to be kept above the waterline. So you'll find that the exit points and in points, the, the, the seacocks on these, on these boats, so you'll find that the exit points and in points, the, the, the seacocks on these, on these boats, have to be at least 300 mil above the waterline. So that's why we've got that tall pipe there. This boat is the Howden, H-O-Y-D-E-N, the Howden. And she's lying in Conlon Marina uh, in Wales, in South Wales. Now the people there in the marina were really very helpful, particularly uh, the people in the marina were very helpful, particularly Oliver Whitmore. He really leant over backwards to help us. We, anything we asked for, we got it and we got all the help we needed. So thanks a lot to Conlon Marina for that. This is a well found boat, as I said. She's very well kept, kitted out. This is, this is, I'd be very proud to have this boat and to have this engine in it now. I really would. So there you are. That's the end of my story. Thanks a lot.